conventions are over as this program is airing on the weekend. Donald Trump is the Republican nominee. Hillary Clinton is the Democrat. You served with Clinton in the Senate. You support Trump. Both now say uh, that they can't be trusted with the national security <laughs> briefings. Yeah. Uh, Trump called on Russia to hack into Clinton's emails. What, what, what do you make of this race? <laughs> Well, what, you know, I run into people all the time, Bill, that say, I don't like either one of them. And if you look at the um, surveys, you'll see that most Americans don't like the choice. So how do you make a decision in a race like this? And here's what I tell people. If you're happy with where the country is now, you think America's doing just fine and want four more years just like the last eight, then you ought to vote for Hillary Clinton, the candidate of the status quo. But if you want America to take a new path, this is really not a personality contest because apparently people are not fond of either one of them. The core issue is, are you satisfied or not? And I think in order to achieve a change in direction, you need a different policies in the White House. And I'm convinced Donald Trump will be different, uh, dramatically different from Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton. Do you, uh, when Trump campaigns, do you uh, take him at his word that he is for some of the things that he says he is for? And, and could you support those things in the Senate? Uh, uh, says this uh, wall between the U.S. and Mexico is a, is a top priority. Uh, have you given some thought as to how much money the Congress would allocate for something like that? Well, there are parts of the, of the, of the border where a wall probably makes sense, other parts where it doesn't. <coughs> border security is important and we haven't done a good job of securing the border and to the extent that Donald Trump is more serious about securing the border than Hillary Clinton and I think he is I certainly agree with him. Are the political parties in, in <clears throat> somewhat of an identity crisis right now on both sides? Democrats are openly courting Republican support at their convention mm -hmm. this week. Trump uh, says that the supporters of the self-described socialist uh, Bernie Sanders should go for him uh, who stands for what? <laughs> well, I think, I think people can pretty safely say the Republican Party is still America's right of center party, and the Democratic Party is not only left of center, but now far left of center, because Hillary Clinton has adopted most of Bernie Sanders' uh, position. So there's a clear choice here uh, philosophically. In terms of appealing for the voters, there's no question that Donald Trump is after people who are losing out in today's economy. Uh, doing particularly well with white working class Americans who've lost jobs uh, to foreign competition and to the extent that he's appealing to a group that frequently votes Democratic that's different I don't think the policies are all that different Hillary Clinton is obviously trying to make everybody convinced that, uh, that Trump doesn't have the temperament for the job so we'll see who makes the best argument to the American people and who wins. Let's get to this uh, current uh, major uh, and tragic issue, the shooting massacre in Orlando. 49 people were killed last weekend. There are many calls for action, including preventing people on terrorist watch lists from being um, able to uh, purchase guns. Some recent numbers show that 91 percent of the time when people on those lists uh, went to purchase a gun, they were able to complete the purchase. You have had reservations about that in the past. Is there a version of a proposal you would support? You know, it's a horrific tragedy, and, you know, everybody thinks, oh, my goodness, how do, how do we stop this? How do we stop, you know, terrorists from having guns? But I'm kind of a big believer in reading the bills, you know, trying to figure out what's in them and whether it would work. As a physician, we try to look things very logically. What will work and what would have stopped this killing? So let's say you do what the Democrats want to do. They want to take away the Second Amendment rights of anybody on the terror list. Well, this killer wasn't on the list. And so I've been asking this question. I met with the FBI director. I've been asking this question over and over again. Why wasn't he on the list? And the answer I'm getting is that they investigated him a couple of times. They had an investigation over for 10 months, and then they closed it. And so my response to the FBI was, well, you said he wasn't a credible threat, and I understand you did your best, but he was a credible threat. Maybe we should leave the investigations open longer. And if there is an open investigation, you're on the list, and what happens currently is the FBI's called before you can buy a weapon. So we do have a system, but the system broke down here mainly because the FBI closed the investigation. And there's a lot of evidence why they might have should have kept it open. 
several times, at least two or three times, he threatened co-workers. Even going back to 2007, he was kicked out of a police academy for threatening co-workers. Twice he said he was going to kill people and it was going to be part of an Islamic jihad. He went to Saudi Arabia. He also was in communication, if indirectly, some communication with a suicide bomber. You add all of that up and you're like, why in the world did they close the investigation? And then the news is today that I'm hearing, or in the last couple of days, he went to a gun store five weeks before this, tried to buy body armor and tried to buy a thousand rounds of ammunition, and they actually called the FBI. And so I'm thinking, gosh, if I'm in the FBI, what would I do? I was like, hmm, maybe I would look in a hundred mile radius for people we've interviewed, take their pictures down to the gun store and say, which one of the, they didn't have his name, but I'm guessing they might have been able to catch this guy. So we've got to do a better job at trying to stop people, better police work. But it doesn't make sense. You know, a lot of people have been for gun control. National Democrats have been for more gun control and banning guns for a long time. But we have to decide would it worked. So they want to ban gun controls, guns for people on the list. But the problem is the guy wasn't on the list, so it wouldn't fix the problem. What I'm doing is saying, I don't want terrorists to have guns. How would it actually fix the problem? So I am for legislation that would say we keep the FBI investigations open longer. And what we're going to put forward on Monday is that FBI investigations will be open for five years. If you start and you get interviewed, it's going to be open for five years. It doesn't mean they're looking at you the whole time, but it means you'd be on the list the whole time. Did you consider resigning, considering that uh, you uh, could not do part of your job, you said? No, resignation was never an option for me. I feel if I had resigned, I would have um, simply just laid down and done nothing. And to be effectual, to be an effectual witness, um, not just for God, but for everybody, you know, you, you have to be willing to stand, to take heat and to and to, to go through the pressure of the trial if you ever want to make a difference. What do you say to those who say that a person elected to an office should discharge all of the duties of that office? Well, actually, I was discharging all the duties of my office. Um, the Supreme Court ruling did not affect our law any because our law can only be changed by our legislators. So, essentially, our marriage license um, KRS, the statutes, had not been changed, and they still stated that, you know, certain people were not eligible for marriage license. And so not to discriminate, I withheld marriage license from all because I, I didn't want people to think I was discriminating because that, you know, that wasn't, that was never my intention. Does Governor Bevan's order that allows the removal of the names of the county clerks from those marriage licenses, and now this is apparently going to uh, be decided in the legislature uh, as well, does that remedy the situation in your view? Well, that is the exact accommodation that I had asked for. Bill, I asked for our governor to um, remove the clerk's name from the marriage license so that it would not be my signature, my name, and my authorization that would issue those license. Um, and Governor Bashir could have done that just as, you know, Governor elect Bevan did. Has anything from your experiences of uh, recent months uh, uh, changed your view in any way? Has it changed uh, you as a person in any way? It's probably made me a stronger uh, person, stronger Christian. When you get to a point where you are outside, that realm where you're comfortable and where you have control, you have to rely on God. And that makes you stronger in your faith. Do you have any regrets of the way things have uh, gone down in recent months? No, none whatsoever. Um, I, I do feel that um, for me, it, it was always about standing up for, for God's Word, standing up for the definition of marriage. and. You know, no offense, the media has made it into an issue that really it wasn't for me. Now, it may have been for them, but it was never that issue, you know, of, of a gay or a lesbian issue for me. It was always about standing up for the Word of God. So, um, I don't know, maybe if, if that had been more clear and more evident to, to the other side. But I, I, I have no regrets. 
somebody else really watching all of the Senate races tonight is uh, the Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, who hopes to retain that post. Uh, the good possibility that the Democrats could take the majority tonight, so we'll see.